Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about cultural hearths and some of the native peoples of the Americas. And since we didn't cover this in North America, I'll include a couple of organized civilizations that, uh, that flourished in North America at different times, including the Mississippian civilization, which were around at the time of the Mayans in Eastern North America, who practice extensive maize or corn agriculture. Uh, one thing they're known for are large earthen mounds that they built that are still can be visited today in some places. Uh, in the southwestern United States, we also have Anasazi people who the, developed the, the Pueblo building patterns that, we, that are in places like Chaco Canyon. And much larger organized groups exist as we go further south into the middle America. American world. So in Central America, probably the best known group were the Aztecs. And their capital, which is modern Mexico City, um, was also the capital of the Aztecs. And they're well known because they were an existing empire when the Spanish arrived in Mexico. And not too far from the Aztecs in Central Mexico was an earlier civilization of Teotihuacan. They were a pre-Aztec civilization with a large city that rivaled many cities in Europe at the time. There were a number of other civilizations in central Mexico as well, but we're just trying to highlight a few of a few. Here. Another large civilization in, that extended from southern Mexico through Central America were the Maya. The, the Maya were a highly developed pre-Columbian empire um, prior to the Aztecs, and they excelled at mathematics, astronomy, this building in the view, for example, is a building that was used to record seasons and observe, uh, observe astronomical effects. And, and one thing about the, the Maya is while the cities were abandoned at some point, the, the Mayan people still remain in the area that where the Mayan civilization first flourished. I will include South America here as well to make it a complete unit. And in South America, we had the Inca Empire. And the Inca was the largest empire of the Americas, and it extended from Peru throughout other parts of the Western South America, primarily along the Andes Mountains, as you can see here. This is, a, this is part of the, some uh, Inca ruins high in the Andes Mountains. Now, one reason that the Inca were able to flourish as a large civilization is they had diverse agriculture. Now, if you kind of think back to the previous lecture and look at this image here, um, let's think of a question, why could they have such a diverse set of crops? And I won't pause for an answer because we're on video, but if you, my guess, it had to do with a variety of environments in the Andes, that altitudinal zonation allowed the Inca Empire to grow a wide variety of different types of food, from tomatoes at lower elevation to potatoes at higher elevations. And to wrap this together, there are what many of these play cultural hearths. And in the introduction to the course, we talked about domestication and the agricultural revolution. And if we didn't mention it, the agricultural revolution did not happen in one place and it didn't happen at one time. It occurred at various places throughout the world at different times, including in two locations in the Americas. Um, one is the, what's called the Mesoamerican cultural hearth here in, near central Mexico and extended down through Central America, and then from there extended, agriculture extended from there up into places like where the Anasazi were, or in the Mississippian cultures. The second place was in the Andes Mountains here in South America. This is considered a separate cultural hearth. So again, just to recap, cultural hearths are places where civilization fo followed the domestication of plants. This happened in two places in the Americas in the Mesoamerican cultural heart, which includes both the Aztec and the Mayan cultures, and in the Andean or Andes cultural hearth in South America, which is primarily the home of the Inca Empire. Now, there will be other cultural hearths that we'll talk about later on, but we don't need to include them here. Now, one thing to note is that indigenous cultures have, uh, there were more indigenous people in Middle and South America than there were in North America. And many of those indigenous people still thrive. In fact, these are places in Central America and Mexico 
where more than half of the people speak an indigenous language. 